Okay, hello everybody. My name is Radislav Pozimek and I work with Ma together with Martin in the Anaconda installer team. So my topic is snakes versus GTK, make love no war. And first of all, I would like to tell that those two snakes are the Anaconda installer and Python because we use Python and GTK in the Anaconda installer. So I would like to show you what are the problems and, uh, and how we deal with them because I think it's quite neat. And if you want to use our code, you are really free to use it. So the first problem is that on the other, on one side there is a global interpret lock in Python, but on the other side there is GTK library which is not thread safe. So you cannot do tweaks of the widgets from multiple threads. While Anaconda needs to run, run background threads because we do some operations that, took ta that take time and we don't, we don't we cannot afford to stack the main loop for the time before these operations are uh, done. So the background threads needs to do ch need to do changes in the GUI because, for example, if yum fetches metada metadata, we want to tell user that metadata is fetched and he or she may continue. Of course, users notice when the main loop gets stuck for a long time. Also, GTK doesn't provide some high-level uh, functions for some high-level operations, and the way it pr the way it emits signals means that if you, for example, have a GTK entry, and you have a callback bound to the change signal, you this signal I gets emitted with every single character you type into the entry. So if user types 20 characters fast, you get your code call 20 times and doing 20 cha changes where the user actually sees only the last change. So for these reasons, we have the PyAnaconda UI GUI utils module and I would like to show you how it looks. Uh, the first of all, there is the GTK call once function where you pass a function and arguments for it and it makes sure that it is scheduled in the GTK main loop and it gets run at some point. And the wrapped function uh, returns false, which means that this function is called only once because if you return true, uh, it stays in the loop and is called forever. So that's how you can eat your CPU power. Then there is the GTK action way decorator where if you have a function and you decorate it with this decorator, uh, it makes sure that the function is called in the GTK main loop and then the result, uh, the return value is actually returned back to you. So you have a thread running and you want to do something with GTK, but you cannot do it from the thread. So you have to schedule an action in the GTK main loop and wait for the result. And this is what the decorator does. And then there is the fire GTK action, which, is, which has uses the decorator to run a function and wait for the return value. GTK action await, basically the same, except for you don't wait, to, you don't wait for the result. GTK action list, it's like basically something really similar. GTK batch map is quite a complicated thing, but it means that you have a list of items, then you have a Python function to call on them, and then you have a GTK related function to call on them, and it spawns a thread that runs the Python function on the list of items, and then those, those items are, tho the results are pro processed in the GTK main loop. So it's like some kind of pipelining. And um, this is probably the most interesting one. It's the timed action decorator, which is used for the, the uh, callbacks. And actually, I may show you the difference. This video is, uh, or I will start with this one, the dialog we have where I typed English and the video is going on, but the GTK, co the callbacks we have in our code are now run for 20 times and nothing happens and the GUI looks like stuck and then we may get to the result. 
but it really takes time. Maybe I can skip it. Yeah, and now you sh you ha you see the result. Whereas with you, wha wi if you decorate the callback with the timed action decorator, it looks like this. User starts typing, letters appear. There is the busy cursor, and then the callback is triggered only once. So this is the reason. This is the difference, and the only thing you have to do in your code is like decorate it with this timed action decorator. So it's pretty simple. And it takes some parameters. Oh, sorry. So you can you can tweak what should be the delay to wait for another event to happen. There you can tweak the threshold so that it makes sure that if this time elapses, the callback is definitely called at least at once. And you have to you can control if the cursor is busy or not because for example if you move move with the slider like changing the size of some partition you don't want to make the cursor busy because user user uses it for sliding the slider so that's can that can be controlled as well and then there is a yeah busy cursor and busy cursor functions like some helper functions fancy set sensitive which makes your widgets sensitive and also the mnemonic widgets. So if you have a label that is used as a mnemonic widget for another widget, they both get insensitive, really hide, really show. It looks like it, it demonstrates how nice GTK is. Then there is set tree view selection. If you have a tree view and you want to select some particular line, it's this amount of co code to do it properly. So we have a function for that. Then there is escape markup which uh, escapes the markup befo before you put it into some label or things like that. And it's, be it's aware of Unicode and some default direction. So altogether, it's like, I don't know, 40, 400 lines of code. But I think it's pretty neat. If you have those few functions and decorators, you can do quite complex things in a really easy way just using the decorators and they are written in the way that they really make sure nothing bad happens. It wasn't true from the very beginning because this was originally called GTK thread wait and if you called it from the main thread, from the thread where the main loop was running, there, um, there was a deadlock because you were, st you stuck the main loop by waiting for something that should happen in the main loop. So that's why we added this code that controls if the if the function is called in the main thread or not and does different things in those cases. The only like nas like not so nice is the is the batch map I think. Oh yeah, I d I'm not sure. Yeah. So here is the assert that you cannot actually call this or use this in the main thread. Okay, that's all from me, probably. Yeah. So th this is a link. You can have. You can take a look at the code in our code code base, or just clone Anaconda installer, which provides something more. Okay, question. Yeah, we've been thinking about it. The problem is that, well, nobody wants to use it. Like, nobody knows about it. That's why I am having this liking talk. And the slight problem is that we we make use of our uh, thread manager and our Anaconda thread class, which can be made some general things. Like, you can instantiate the library or the Python module with similar things like give us a function that tell that will tell us if we are in the main thread or not that's what we want and that i already have a small use of thread manager in my pro in my like hobby hobby project so it's really useful <laughs> yeah so we will probably make it a uh, separate python package uh we are like it's hard to come up with a name because i don't want to call it pygtk <laughs> <laughs> obviously well thanks for your attention